Hi everyone, it's Steven here at Bland Designs, and this is CRAP video number five. And CRAP stands for Creative Recreation and Play. And so today I'm going to do some experimentation, and I'm thinking of making some paper. Um, now, I call this CRAP, of course, because I've already explained what CRAP stands for. Maybe you think all my videos are CRAP. But I have no idea what's going to happen. I've been watching some YouTube videos where people have been making paper using various elements like tissue paper and acrylic skins and things like that. And so I got thinking, well, I have a whole pile of these. What are these? These are baby wipes. Yeah, kind of stiff, aren't they? They're what I use to clean up my leftover paint, my messy spills, things like that. And they become quite colorful. So I thought, well, maybe we should use them for something. So what I did was, well, actually, I have used them in the past. But what I've done with them is I've uh, let them dry out. Then I kind of press them with an iron to flatten them a little bit. And then I've actually put them in my sewing machine and so sewn bits and pieces of them onto tags. And that has created a neat effect. Now, with these ones, what I've done, you see how stiff they are? They're almost like paper right now. I treated each of these with um, some fabric uh, sizing. Uh, it kind of looks like a white glue. I put it on. I put it on fairly generously. I may have put too much on and let it sit and dry. And it takes quite a while to dry. And so now they're kind of stiff, almost cardboardy. So, in fact, you could probably put them through your die cut machine and maybe we'll do that you know, as part of this video today. But I thought, well, why not see if I can make some kind of a paper with them? So, the first thing I need is I need a base to put this paper on. So, I'm using deli paper. And you've seen me use deli paper before for jelly prints and things like that. And there are two sides to deli paper. There's a shiny side and there's a matte side. And I'm going to use the shiny side today because I'm thinking it may allow me to be able to peel this off the finished product once it's all thoroughly dry. Now, how am I going to glue this all down? Well, I want to use something that's clear. I could use Mod Podge. Uh, however, Mod Podge has more of a glue consistency, and I'm thinking that maybe it might crack once it's dry. Although I've seen videos on YouTube where people use Mod Podge with uh, a variety of things to make their paper, and it seems to work pretty well. Uh, the other thing I could use is like a matte medium, and uh, that would probably work. It's a little bit more flexible. But um, I'm going to try this. Just got some of this the other day. It's a soft gel gloss. It'll dry clear. And it says that it's thinner than golden heavy body colors, holds only slight peaks, excellence of base for wet blending of color. So I'm thinking that maybe this will give me the pliability that I want. Again, this is a crap video. And whether this works or not, I have no idea. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay down. It is very soft. Look at that. It's very soft, very creamy. Um, I'm just going to spread it around on this for a moment. So I'm using it basically like a glue. I'm not putting it on really thick. I'm really not sure how much of this I should use. But because I'm going to be building up layers on this, um, I don't think I need a real heavy coat. But just to make sure that the area is thoroughly coated. Okay. Got a little pot of water over here. I'll put my brush in that to keep it moist. And so we'll go through these. And, uh, well, I'm just going to... Ooh. Tears like cardboard and cardstock, too. So I'm just going to tear off pieces and uh, okay I'm gonna need a paper towel bring my paper towels over here a little bit closer so I don't have to keep running back and forth across the room for them and I'm just gonna kick some of the moisture out of my brush and uh, I guess I'll just spread a little of this on the back side and put her down here, put a little more on top, just like I would if I was doing some collage work. And in a sense, this is collage work. Another piece here. Now, 
because these are so stiff, I'm kind of using my fingers to push down some of the bumps and the parts that didn't smooth out all that well. My uh, deli paper keeps kind of moving around on me. Actually, give me one second here. I'm thinking maybe I take some uh, painter's tape. Also help me keep it in the frame here. If I just stick it down, or maybe with some, some painter's tape here. So this will keep it from moving around on me. Also help keep it in shot for you. Okay. Let's carry on here. Let's grab a different color. I'm just wondering if I even need to put it on both sides. Hmm. Now one thing, if the, if the deli paper itself, if I can't really get this off the deli paper, I don't think it's going to matter. It'll act as a backing, and deli paper usually goes somewhat transparent, like tissue paper, when you um, get the soft gel on it. Kind of hitting it with the brush too, like pushing it into uh, the deli paper. Now I'm thinking, when this all dries, and depending on how many layers I put down, and because I've already stiffened the baby wipes with the fabric sizing. Um, this may be kind of thick. So instead of using it like for a background piece, I might um, I might be able to put it right through my die cutter or even my electronic cutter and cut out shapes with that. That's always a possibility. Actually, this is kind of fun too. It's a little therapeutic. I like making paper and trying different things with it um, because really it's kind of mindless. You're not really creating any kind of specific design. You're not trying to draw a scene. And, uh, you know, it's a good way to use up some of your scraps too because you can basically do this with anything. You can do this with your leftover scrapbook paper as well. Um, I saw one video where a lady was doing uh, stuff with um, acrylic skins and uh, also um, I'm trying to think here and, and do this at the same time. It's not working very well for me. Uh, she what was I talking about? Oh yeah, acrylic skins. Acrylic skins, if you don't know what those are, look them up. They're, I've made some. They're fascinating. I want to make some more. Um, because I'm seeing different techniques people are using to create them. But basically, it's putting down on a non-stick surface 
layers of acrylic paint and a medium like uh, matte gel medium or even mod mod podge probably work with this soft gel as well and uh, letting it dry and then you can peel it off the non-stick and you can do all kinds of different things with them use them as backgrounds saw one lady she created a, a mountain uh, scene by just tearing off pieces of it and, and going over it so it's really kind of interesting stuff and as you know I volunteer at my lo local uh, art gallery and right now we've got a lot of mixed media works on display and one of them that I really like is made up of these acrylic skins and uh, the um, she's embedded photographs and things into them as well and she's done some stitching in them so really they're quite fascinating they do take a long time to dry though the thicker your paint and medium the longer they're going to take to dry uh, I made a couple of skins to show um, the people I take tours with which are mostly kids um, so they could feel it because kids especially they want to touch the art and that's a no-no so uh, I made some skins but they took about three days to uh, dry but the kids were really fascinated by them so uh, I want to try some other things uh, with those as well so that, that's not what I'm doing here of course but uh, it's another fun technique okay what I think I'm going to do is you get the idea of what's going on here so I think I'm just going to carry on and uh, I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to finish this piece up and then I'm going to dry it and then I'll come back and let you see what I might do with it next I don't know what I'm going to do with it next it's all crap to me okay so for the most part of this this is pretty much dry now I kind of went over lightly after I got all the pieces down over it again with a little bit of a light top coat of the soft gel medium as well and it was gloss as you can see so I've got a bit of a shine on it and that's okay so right now what I think I'm going to do is when I use the heat gun on this oh and just as an aside okay so you know I was pushing down and squeezing out some of the glue or the soft gel underneath it and I was getting it all over my hands well then I went to wash my hands and of course remember as a kid you used to get the white glue on your fingers and it would all dry and you'd peel it off well I had a lot of that so I've decided to protect my hands for this next stage and I don't know I think I have mentioned this before this is called invisible gloves there's several different ones on the market uh, this is a coating you just put it on your hands uh, like like uh, hand cream and just wipe it all in and this stuff is remarkable anything you get on your hands with the exception of probably delusions ink or alcohol inks will come right off with uh, a good scrub with soap and water so just a tip if you're getting into something like this I suggest you use that so I'm thinking here I'm going to add another layer on top of this and um, to do so I think I'm just going to use acrylic paint again out of a tube some cheap uh, what's this this is craft smart paint I got it at Michaels with a coupon a whole bunch of them and I've got aqua here I'm going to use that on top of it and I'm going to put it through a stencil to make a pattern on top of here now I'm using acrylic paint for this because I have a feeling that this is pretty much waterproof so if I use like a distress ink or something like that it may just it won't dry properly probably it'll just smudge so I'm hoping by using the acrylic paint that uh, once I hit it with the heat gun and let it sit it'll dry more permanently in case I want to add another layer or something else over on top of this so I've grabbed the Tim Holtz stencil and uh, twist it this one's called I think he designed this for Halloween use but I kind of like the patterns in it I think it's kind of kind of interesting and I've got out a makeup sponge here and I'm just going to dab some of this paint through the stencil I'm not going to put it on too heavy actually you know what I'm going to do um, I do this a lot with my stencils I use a repositionable spray and I just lightly coat the back of this and I'll move this off camera so I don't get it all over my computer and on my camera just a light spray of it and what I find this does is it helps me to seal the stencil down when I'm using something that's sort of runny and it doesn't seem to hurt the surface of anything so I'll just dab our paint onto this 
And I don't have to do the entire stencil. I can leave parts of it, uh, you know, darker, whatever. I, I don't want necessarily a nice uniform coat for this. I'm not sure how this is going to set up here. We'll find out. Well, that's looking not too bad at all. So uh, doing another section. Now I'm dabbing it and I'm not spreading it because, oh good, I just got some right across. That's good. Well, that's going to add a little bit more dimension. Not going to worry about that. As I was saying, I'm dabbing it. I'm not stroking it through because I don't want to go under my stencil. A little bit of it will probably seep under the stencil. Can't be helped, but... Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, put a little bit more down over here. And I think I'll put a little down here. A little bit more over here. Okay, so I've got a little bit more texture here. I'm kind of liking that. I uh, may need a little bit up here in this corner as well. Okay, so I'm going to go wash off my stencil. And I'll probably hit this with the heat gun again. And then I'll be back and decide on what else we want to do with this. Okay, so the acrylic paint that I put on through the stencil seems to be dry now. I use the heat gun on it as well. Um, you know, you don't have to use a heat gun on these, but I'm impatient. You could just let each layer just dry and come back to it later. I'm doing this all pretty fast. So now I'm thinking of adding another layer, of maybe a layer of script. So I have uh, this rubber stamp by Tim Holtz. I'm not sure what it's called. And uh, I'm going to use stays on ink. It's a solvent ink because... Uh, any other kind of ink will probably just wipe off on here. So you need an archival type of ink and stays on is one of the best. So I'm just going to get my stamp inked up here. And I'm not using an acrylic block on my stamp because um, I really don't care about getting a really crisp and clear image from the stamp. I just want to add a little bit of texture with this. So I'm just going to push it down. And I'm using fairly firm pressure because I really don't have a pad on here either. Probably should have put a pad under it. it. might give me a little better. But like I said, I'm going for that sort of grungy look. And yeah, it's not bad. It's giving me a little bit of texture. It's not very clear, but I don't want it to be clear. So that's okay. Plus, this stamp pad might be a little less juicy. I find with stays on that uh, they tend to dry up pretty quick. I do have some re-inkers for this, but I'm not going to take the time right now because I don't think it matters. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera or not, but it's just giving me some light texture.
Oh, good shot. That'll give me texture too. Yeah, nothing came off, so that's okay. Oh, I know you can't see this on screen. I'll put it over here. I mean, I'm sure you've seen a rubber stamp being inked up before, but... Okay. It's not too bad. I think I'll add a little bit more up here. And here. Okay. So, I've got that. So, I think um, I'll just give it a blast here. Just to set it. Okay, so I'm going to clean up my rubber stamp here and uh, come back and I'm not sure what I'm going to add to it next, but that'll be a surprise. So I'm thinking this is getting a little dark, so I think I need to break it up a little bit, add some maybe some white splatters. And uh, by accident, I discovered the other day that this paint marker by Posco in white, uh, if you get the tip really juicy, you can actually splatter with it pretty good as opposed to putting a paintbrush in some watered down acrylic white paint so let's see how this works so get this really running and then well oh that's kind of cool okay instead of up and down Do it from the side. Well, maybe a brush and acrylic paints just as easy, a little easier. But I've got it out, so I'm giving it a try. And after all, it is just a crap video. You know, I'm kind of liking this uh, piece I've made and I'm not sure if I'm going to add anything more to it Oops. it's kind of fun doing this but as usual I have a problem of knowing when to stop. Okay, let's stop while we're ahead. Okay, so do I want to add anything more to this? You know, I'm thinking no. I think I've got enough layers on here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video, I'm going to give this a really good dry, and then we're going to see whether or not we can peel this off the deli. My feeling is right now that this will not peel off the deli paper, but not a problem, because what I intend to do is then, if it won't peel off, I'm just going to go around and cut it out, and I'll leave the deli paper on the back, and we'll see together what the deli paper on the back looks like as well. I'll be back. Okay. So, it's all dry now, and I'm going to see if I can peel it up. In fact, I, I did this a little bit off camera just to see what's going to happen. And it started to come off here, but I don't think it's going to come off that well. So, I think what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to take the tape off from around here. And I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm just going to cut all the way around, first of all.
Now it feels a little moist under here, but that may be condensation from having it stuck down on this non-stick mat here as I try it with the heat down. Okay, so I've taken the excess off and there's my finished piece. However, this back stuff feels a little moist and I'm thinking I might be able to treat this like you would treat a transfer where if I put a little water on this I might be able to take that backing off and it'll look a little better than clouded over so let's see get out my squirt gun of water I'm just going to spray it on the top part first and let it have a couple of seconds here to sort of soak in And then, using my finger, I'm just going to rub it and see what happens here. Hope this doesn't destroy it. Well, it's sort of coming off. It's not the way I intended it to do, but maybe I haven't let the water soak through enough. Mind you too, this uh, deli paper has that shiny side that we put all this stuff down on. So, that may not let me take it off very easily either. But really, all I'm trying to do is make this less foggy. Does it really matter? Well, it depends what I'm going to do with it. If, um, hmm, I wonder if that's the water or whether that's the gel coming up. That could be the gel coming up on my finger. Now let's give it a bit of more water here. Okay, that's quite a bit of water. So let it have just a couple of seconds or so to soak in as I peel some of it off my hands. Give it a little bit more time here. Now, of course, the other thing, too, is the first layer were those baby wipes. And what I might be doing here, I don't know if that's, that looks like that's, you know what I think? I'm going to stop. Because I think what's happening is I'm reactivating the soft gel. And it's getting pretty sucked here. So I'm going to clean this up. Paper towel. So, okay, my conclusion for that is that that deli paper is here to stay. Which I kind of suspect it. Yeah, I can smell the gel. It smells like um, wet white glue. So, yeah, it was reactivating. And that means everything will fall right apart with that if I continue doing that. So, we're not going to do that. Now, you know, if I built it up on, say, a non-stick mat like this and didn't use the deli paper at all, I might have been able to pull it off from that as one piece and it would be a little bit more translucent or transparent, whatever you want with that. So, although I think, at the end of the day, this was kind of fun to make and I think it's definitely usable. It's a fairly substantial piece, but it's got lots of flexibility to it. I think you could take this and put it on a sewing machine and sew through it. Um, you can still probably tear it apart. Yeah, it's pretty tough. You can probably get it started with a pair of scissors. I don't want to tear it though because I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. Um, when it's thoroughly dried because it's probably still damp in between the layers as well. 
maybe if I let this dry a little bit more, I can get more of that off. Because it may be just that the structure underneath it, I haven't given it enough time. So maybe if I leave it overnight, that would work a little better. So I'm just going to leave it for now. And uh, it's kind of fun to make. So it's a way to use up your baby wipes. Um, or scrap paper or whatever. So just experiment, I guess. So this was crap video number five. How to make your own paper out of used baby wipes. So, we'll see you for the next crap uh, video sometime in the future. Bye-bye.